Welcome to the session on Human Microbiome. What is the most influential organ in your body? Is it your brain or is it your heart? The answer is no. It is not your brain nor it is your heart. The most influential organ in anybody's body is the microbiome. What is the microbiome? Imagine it is an organ in your body that weighed as much as your brain. It affects your health, your weight and even your behavior. It is the collection of microbes in and on your body and it is known as the human microbiome. We are living with a tremendous amount of microorganisms in our body ranging from bacteria, RK, etc. to virus and fungi. Our body contains about 100 trillion microbes. That means we have 10 times more microbes than human cells. In other words, it is estimated that only 10% of cells in our body is our own, that is, which contain human DNA. The other 90% cells are microorganisms, it is the microbiome. They constitute 1 to 3% of our body weight. These microorganisms are present in our skin and mucosal membranes especially mucosal membranes of respiratory tract, genitourinary tract and gastrointestinal system. As we said, they comprise 90% of the cells in our body, but they are only 1 to 3% of our body weight. Why this discrepancy? It is due to the comparatively smaller size of the microorganisms compared to the human cells. That is why, even though they comprise 90% of cells in our body, they come up to only 1-3% to of our body weight. We can get an idea about the size of microorganisms now. In this image, we can see a pin. When the tip of this pin is magnified under a microscope, bacterial cells are visible. The left end image shows the tip magnified and we can see the small orange yellow shapes which are further magnified in the middle image so that the orange yellow structures are a bit more clear and visible and when magnified more as in the right most image they are visible as road shaped structures and these are the bacteria the road shaped ones hope it is very clear now that how small the bacteria the microbes are. This image also shows the size comparison of various living cells and we can see a human cell about 10 to 100 micrometer in size while a microbe such as a bacterium typically have about 0.5 to 5 micrometer only. Viruses are still smaller and they are only having a nanometer scale size range. So, even though the microbiome comprise 90% of cells in our body, they come up to only 1-3% to of our body weight. Numbers matter, not their size. Another interesting fact is that different parts of an individual's body, the skin, genitourinary tract, respiratory tract, gut or the gastrointestinal tract all have very different distinct communities of microorganisms. Different parts of our body have different and distinct microbial communities. Again, there are differences in microbiomes from person to person. Each individual have a unique microbiome fingerprint. Like the usual fingerprint, no two individuals will have the same bacterial or microbiome profile. We human beings are 
99.9 percentage identical to each other in terms of our genome, the DNA. Only 0.1 percentage difference exists at the genome level. But the microbiome of each individual can be 80 to 90 percentage different from another. We are 80 to 90 percentage different in terms of our microbiome. So, the visible organs and the invisible microbiome together constitute a complete human being. It is all very dynamic and researchers are going on to study the microbiota in detail. Its composition influences by various factors, roles that it play in our body and so on. The microbiome performs several functions in our body. The microbiome associated with various organs are influenced by a variety of environmental factors and they have a role in determining the health and function of these organs. They have an influence on our mental health, they promote skin health, boosts our immune system, aids in digestion and absorption and protect against toxins. Now, let us move on to the microbiome associated with our gastrointestinal system. It is known as the gut microbiome. From where do these microorganisms get into our body? We get them from our environment, from the moment of our birth. When we travel down the birth canal and then through breast milk. They change over time and become more complex. Our microbiome changes quickly over our first year or by second year. And they are generally shaped by microorganisms from breast milk, from the environment and various other factors also influence us. It gets stabilized, almost stabilized by the time we are about three years old. But the environment we live in, our diet, stress, and the medicines we take, especially antibiotics, play a role in shaping the microbiome. This means that our microbiome continues to change throughout our life. Diet is considered as one of the main driver in shaping the gut microbiota or the microbiome associated with intestinal tract across the lifetime. Over recent years, the gut microbiome has been found to be associated with a variety of diseases and conditions, ranging from diabetes to autism and anxiety to obesity. The intestinal bacteria play a critical role in maintaining immune and metabolic homeostasis, such as their role in the synthesis and absorption of various vitamins and their ability to protect against a variety of pathogens. Altered gut bacterial composition, that is a change in the microbial composition from the normal state is known as dysbiosis, gut dysbiosis. This dysbiosis has been found to be associated with the pathogenesis of many inflammatory diseases and infections. Another interesting thing about the gut microbiome is that it is well known that our gut and our brain are in constant communication and our gut is known as the second brain. The lining of our gut or the gastrointestinal system contains a nervous system called the enteric nervous system which signals continuous communication with the brain via neurotransmitters and hormones via millions of nerves that lines the gut. Our gut microbiome plays an integral role in the system and they can thus affect our physical and mental well-being. It has been shown that a good diet including probiotics and prebiotics that help to balance our healthy bacterial population has significant positive effects on our well-being. It helps even with depression and anxiety. A healthy microbiota also helps to develop our immune system and digest our food and they even influence our behavior. 
So how can we take care of these important cohabitants of ours? We can protect our microbiome by avoiding the over or rather unnecessary use of antibiotics and other non-selective antimicrobials. By following a healthy diet, by including probiotics and prebiotics in the diet, by adopting a healthy lifestyle with enough sleep and exercise. Our microbiome responds quickly to positive healthy habits like proper diet, exercise, etc. Any small change you make will have a big positive effect. So let us be more aware of these cohabitants who will never leave us alone. We are never alone. We are living with our own microbiota. There is more and more information coming up from the microbiome research. Let us stop here for now. And thank you so much for listening.